Hey folks, it's Ave Angel. Welcome back to the channel. And today we're taking a look at the Lionheart Creations Bucky Jungman. Now, this aircraft is a beautiful 1930s biplane that was a common trainer in the time. Similar, in fact, to the Tiger Moth, in fact. Now, originally, I think it was first launched in 1934. It was uh, created by Karl Bucher. I'm probably mispronouncing his last name, so I apologize horribly for that. But it was uh, used by the Germans, the Swiss, the Swedish... Uh, the Spanish and many other nations throughout Europe during that time. In fact, it was the last biplane built in Germany and it had two, of course, open cockpits here in tandem, fixed gear, which is actually very flexible gear that lets it be very good for soft field landing. Now, it first flew on an 80 horsepower engine, but later, which is the B model, had 105 horsepower and it was actually originally produced, at least during the wartime, in Prague by Aero, the uh, Polish, not Polish, or Czech company, I should say. So this is the B model, more powerful engine, the Hearth HM504A two-piston engine, or the A2 piston engine, I should say, not two pistons, that's very wrong. But used by Bulgaria, Czechoslovakia, Croatia, Germany, Greece, Hungary, Japan, the Netherlands, Poland, Romania, Slovakia, South Africa, Spain, Switzerland, Yugoslavia. Yeah, really, 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 really well used. Now, this thing, of course, has a two-blade fixed-pitch propeller, has a maximum speed of about 99 knots, uh, cruises about 92 and can land at 44 knots with a stall speed of 34. Range of 650 kilometers or 350 nautical miles. So let's take a look at this. Obviously we have loads of liveries here, as you can see from the aircraft, which give you a phenomenal selection to fly from. And we are gonna take a look around the outside first. We're here at Zellamse in Austria, one of my favorite places to test European aircraft. Beautifully created. I always like to look at the brakes and the wheels. Look at this thing, that is very pretty. Now it does have this spinner which is actually modeled after a Spanish Casa model uh, on the export versions but a lot of the owners apparently added these to their aircraft. They didn't actually originally have spinners. A lot of people bought them on the aftermarket uh, world and put them on their aircraft. Now this also has also have that external tachometer there. Also a Casa edition which was added by a lot of owners. But this is beautifully model I have to say even the little markings here on the fuselage that is rather detailed rather love it detailed linkages there a very very well detailed aeroplane let's take a look at the cockpit shall we now we are here inside the Jungmann we'll take ourselves down actually for a second here to look at this now the instruments in here are quite fun of course we have the usuals including our parking brake which is by clicking the rudder pedal so you click on that, it takes the parking brake on and off. Fuel. Throttle. This apparently is a nothing switch. Which, they can't click it, I want to click it because it says nothing. Our battery. These are actually the autopilot functions. It has a hidden, simple autopilot if you want to use something. We have a Navcom radio here. We have a transponder down here. Which will be turn the battery on. We can then power it on. Can I even see where the on button is? Apparently it's on, but I don't think I've turned it on. So let's turn the battery on there. Nope, apparently I've not turned it on. I'm probably missing something, of course. They go through the manual. Now, the manual is an external download, of course. You have to get that from Lionheart's website. I will link it in the description. But starting this should be relatively simple. So set ourselves to Mag 1 and Mag 2. Make sure our fuel is in. I think our fuel is on with that. We'll have to find out. And our starter button is here, which I'm struggling to reach because of the magneto. And we have start. Really simple. Very, very easy. So let's centre ourselves again. It's a little bit off-centre there, but that's one of the actual visibility modes. You can go over the side if you need to. Or you can centre yourself off here. I'm just going to put myself a little bit more further to the middle. And we're going to take her out for a test flight, take a look around and see how she actually behaves. So, let me turn my head on for a second. There we go. That will do just nicely. It's 
Excuse me, idiot who's standing where they shouldn't be. It does wallow a little bit, but this is something it does. It has quite a soft, spongy landing gear. So you'll find a little bit of side roll off the gear on this thing. It does a bit of a, as described by the manual, a bit of a hula dance. Which I can totally see. Let's keep our head out the side so we can see what we're doing. I think I'll try this side because there's less taco in the way. We sound a bit more distant there. Not use too much power. Of course, tail draggers, you do need to be careful with them, especially the older ones. They tend to be a little bit more spicy on the ground. A tail dragger is not fully landed until you are parked in the hangar and you're in the airport bar. It's an old adage that I was told a long time ago when I will keep two for the rest of my life. They will ground loop easily, they will misbehave, they will do all sorts of scary shenanigans. So keep yourself uh, very much aware of what you're doing. I'm just going to use this to lean me over to one side, so I'm leaning out the side of the cockpit a bit better. The actual cockpit controls. Now, all the cockpit instruments down there are in German. I'll show you a cool function in a second that was included, which is, in fact, really simple, is this button here. Now they're all in English. Well, the relevant ones, at least. The instruments still display in German, but they're the original instruments, but a lot of the actual placards will now read in English, which is useful. So battery, pilot heat, all those other features... And now English. Okay, we're nearly at the runway here at Zalamse. And I just love the movement on the ground of this aeroplane. It does wobble and wallow. Which is rather spirited and I like it. It adds a lot of flavour to the aeroplane. Again, this is a very common European trainer during the 30s. So a lot of Europe's pilots back then were trained on this aircraft. A bit like the British were trained on the Tiger Moth. And the Americans and the Stearman. It's a similar vintage, and I'd love a Tiger Moth. I know Ant has released his first aircraft for the sim. Hoping the next one's a Tiger Moth. Whoa, whoa, wibble, wobble, wibble, wobble, wibble, wobble. Okay, so the correct way to take off in this thing is to let it fly off the runway, get the tail up first, but to accelerate gently so it's not a full power and go. Make sure to catch her if she behaves weirdly. Ignore any meowing sounds. That's my phone's cat flap app. So I'm let the speed build up here. Tails up. Apply a bit more power as I wibble a little bit. Not too badly. And we're flying away. I'm not even at three quarter throttle yet. Apply a bit more power as we come up here. Now, the forward cockpit over there is completely functional. If I press Control 6, I'm up here in the student cockpit, which is a reduced complexity cockpit. Turn bank, you've got basics of instruments there. All the simple things you want. And I'll go back to the rear with Control 1. Side myself back over here. Weird it's off center, but not the end of the world. Gotta say, I love this thing. Oh, hello. Interesting that my... Okay, that's what was happening. There we go. <laughs> Hat switch actually works properly now. The aeroplane is not unrealistic. I really do like how this behaves. I've managed to very luckily get my hand behind the, uh, I will say stick, and by stick I mean literal stick of a tiger moth, and that was a very simple joy to fly. This reminds me a lot of that. It's a very gentle aeroplane. Obviously it's a trainer, it's a biplane with no flaps, and there's a huge similarity in fact between the two of them. They're very similar period and style and intent of aircraft. Both are very nimble. They'll move very well. They will maneuver as you request them, but they're incredibly stable whilst doing it. And this is no different to that at all. I absolutely love how this thing behaves. It feels very long compared to the Tiger Moth, I will say that. But it is not unrealistic. And it's very much a head out of the cockpit aeroplane. You know, you're not flying this thing with your head squarely on the instrument panel. You know, it's there to tell you information you need, but it's not there to fly it. You're flying it by looking out of the aircraft. Head tracking is certainly a great idea for that, isn't it? There's the airport down below us. We'll bring her around and we'll put her into land. Not a lot to go over in this review, really, other than I actually quite like this. It's detailed, it's pretty. The first Lionheart aircraft that was released was the Trinidad. 
And I think I just didn't like the style of the aircraft, perhaps. It was a well done aircraft, but I noticed there was a bit of performance hit and there was also some weirdness with how the aircraft generally behaved, or the visibility from the cockpit. It was more of an actual aircraft fault than the actual model. I just didn't like the Trinidad. Whereas, look at this thing. It's beautiful. Obviously, the default pilots, it takes your actual number if you want to do. Simple but stunning, lean racehorse of a biplane. Not a racehorse, perhaps, but a, a trusty, trusty thoroughbred. Absolutely gorgeous plane as well. It's been many times referred to as the Stratovarius of, uh, of biplanes. And I can see why. It's like a finely tuned violin. I absolutely love this thing. Even the little gear with the little hoods there over the, uh, the mud guards over the wheels. And the forward rake there of the gear. It just has this very sporty look to it. There's something iconically... Iconically uh, German about it. Even though I believe... Wilco was actually Swedish, maybe? Could be wrong on that one. But I know he was in Sweden for a long period of time. However, let's take ourselves back to... Zellam say over there. We've done enough messing around here. Just looking at this beautiful aeroplane. She'll do exactly what you ask in terms of manoeuvring. It's not an unresponsive aircraft. And it's quick enough. I mean, you're cruising in the 90s. Which is, you know, most GA aeroplanes are about that ballpark, really. To 100. Especially the 152s, etc. Now, you don't have flaps here, of course, which is a consideration. So we're going to set ourselves up here for a base onto final. So I'm going to idle off my power. And let the speed bleed down. I'm going to cross the controls a little bit here just to see A, what she does, and B, dump some altitude and keep the speed. Handles it rather well, actually. The creaking sounds are phenomenal from this thing as it crosses up. Okay, runway in sight. I'm going to keep myself in a bit of a crab here, actually on my way down so I can actually see what I'm doing. It's actually very beneficial to do that if you can actually keep it controlled. This way you can actually see the runway without having your nose too low that you're coming in fast. I'm told I should get my tailwheel down first which is not an uncommon technique to me. So we'll put the tailwheel in first to get that to just touch, kill some speed and let the aeroplane settle down. Balancing on the edge here. Okay, I'm a bit more nose on than I'd like, but I'm keeping it kind of just going sideways. Bit of a slipping approach here. Bit more power to bring me over these trees in the approach. Altitude's a bit high here. More angular attack than I'd like. Straighten her up here. She's not liking this too much. I've still got a good view on the runway there. This is more my own familiarity with the aircraft than it behaving badly. Okay, we're good here. Power on, power on, power on, power on, power on. I'm low, and that was a fence I missed just narrowly. Displace threshold. Okay, center line is good. Touchdown. A little daunting with how far back in the aircraft you are. The nose is so long on this thing because you're in the rear cockpit, of course, and it's a very aft position. But that was surprisingly okay, and I did love how wobbly this thing is on the ground. And it ate that landing beautifully. I didn't get any bounce, really. I thought I was going to bounce from that touchdown, but no, it was very well behaved. Can I stop here in time without upsetting the aircraft and looping it? I always feel like I'm going to ground loop with how wobbly this thing is. It's a real adventure to uh, taxi here. But I've got to say, I love this thing. This is fun. There are not a lot of biplanes. In fact, maybe one or two in the sim so far. This is nice. I like it. How would I compare this to the Waco and the Steam and the other two options that are out there that I can think of offhand? It's got a lot more spirit and more life to it. This feels more alive than those two. It feels more like a completed aircraft that's a fully realised creation. 
it feels uh, the word alive just feels wrong but also right it feels like it has more spirit the, the texturing and the appearance is beautiful um unlike the, the waco which is a very modern biplane or the waco i believe i'm told to call it that feels very polished and the carinado weirdnesses of handling the stearman is a classic but a little bit basic this feels like it has more life to it and more character per se let me turn my head off for a second we'll go outside here for the price 20 pounds in the marketplace this isn't bad i feel like i got my money's worth out of that that is a joyful little airplane would be lovely to fly around in and my god you do feel like you're so far back in that cockpit <laughs> look at where you are you're behind the main wing behind the landing gear all the way out there that is pretty central but it feels so far back with that long nose it really does love this thing really fun little airplane totally recommend it we're on the app score hmm should probably include the manual with it rather than making it a separate download but marketplace be marketplace um a solid nine abs thank you for watching folks bye